The 155mm M1918 howitzer was a gun that saw extensive service with US forces during World War I and, to a limited extent, during World War II as well. During the Second World War, they would be provided to various Allied nations and in the early 1940s, a number of them would find their way into the hands of Chinese forces through the Lend-Lease program. This video will take a closer look at these howitzers in Chinese service. The US 155mm M1918 howitzer was in fact a licensed copy of a French design, the Schneider Model 1917. The howitzer weighed around 3,300 kilograms and was towed by teams of 8 to 10 horses. Firing a 155mm projectile using a bagged charge, it had a range of just over 11 kilometers. During World War I, the US purchased a large number of these howitzers to supply its troops. Along with the howitzers, the US also acquired the rights to manufacture them domestically, and these would be given the designation M1918. They would essentially be identical to the French howitzers, with the biggest difference being the straight shield and a slightly different breech block design. During the interwar period and into the early years of World War II, these howitzers would receive numerous upgrades. The original French guns in US inventory had their breech blocks replaced with US style ones and was redesignated the M1917A1. The carriages also received cradle locks and drawbars, allowing the guns to be towed by vehicles and eliminated the need for limbers. The carriages would also be upgraded to allow for high-speed towing with metal wheels, pneumatic tires, and air brakes being added. Despite the upgrades, the M1918s were still considered to be quite outdated by the start of World War II. In fact, there were plans to design a replacement for the howitzer as early as 1920, although it was eventually halted due to a lack of funding. However, with another war looming, development was restarted in 1939 and the design would be finalized by mid-1941. Designated the 155mm M1 howitzer, production began in 1942. Despite this, the M1918s would stay in service with US troops until around 1944, serving with them from the deserts of North Africa to the islands of the Pacific. As production of the newer M1 howitzers ramped up, Many of the older M1918s were then provided to other allied countries through the Lend-Lease program. 36 of these updated howitzers were provided to Chinese forces stationed in India. It was decided to place these guns in a single artillery regiment, and eventually, the Chinese 12th Artillery Regiment was chosen to be the unit to receive these howitzers. Leaving behind their outdated 75mm M1903 field guns, the men of the 12th Regiment were airlifted from China over to India in 1943, receiving the American howitzers and equipment at the Ramgarh Training Center. After the reorganization process was completed, the 12th Artillery Regiment numbered around 2,000 men and consisted of the following units. Regimental Headquarters, 3 Artillery Battalions, as well as a Special Operations Company. The 36 howitzers were divided evenly among the three artillery battalions, with each battalion consisting of three artillery companies, or batteries in addition to Battalion HQ and a resupply company. Each artillery company was made up of two platoons, and each platoon consisted of two 11-man squads. Each of the squads operated a single 155mm howitzer. There is some debate about whether the howitzers provided to the Chinese forces were the American-manufactured guns or if they were upgraded French ones. However, based off period photos and footage, it seems that both types were present. American markings have been observed on the barrel of a few of the howitzers, suggesting that these are the M1918 howitzers, while on others, the apparent lack of markings on this side of the breach would suggest that these may have been original French guns that had been upgraded to the M1917A1 model. The carriages that the Chinese howitzers were mounted on were of the M1917A4 variant, which is denoted by their curved shields, differing slightly from the American-built M1918 carriages, which had straight shields. In order to prevent confusion, it should be noted that the guns and carriages had their own separate designations. The M1917A4 and M1918s mentioned here refers to the carriages and not the guns themselves. Essentially, the artillery pieces that the Chinese received would be a mix of both M1917A1s and M1918 howitzers, all mounted on the M1917A4 carriage. These carriages were originally manufactured in France and sometime after the end of World War I, were upgraded in the US to allow for high-speed towing. These were identical to the American manufactured ones in all respects except for the shape of the shield. With the howitzers weighing over 4 tons, a powerful vehicle was needed to tow them. 
The vehicle chosen for this role was the Diamond T four ton 6x6 truck, which was the standard vehicle used by the US Army to tow the 155mm howitzers. Around 45 of these vehicles were provided to the 12th Artillery Regiment, along with an additional 110 two and a half ton trucks to transport the equipment and ammunition, which the Americans also provided. Initially, the U.S. supplied 48,000 high-explosive rounds to the unit, although by 1944 this number had risen to over 60,000, as well as an additional 1,800 smoke rounds. Despite the plentiful ammunition and modern equipment, the 12th Regiment would see relatively little action during the Second World War. In fact, the unit would not participate in any fighting inside China, with the little combat that they did see taking place in Burma. For them, most of 1943 and 1944 were spent undergoing training at Ramgar, while at the same time, many of the Chinese infantry units were helping to retake northern Burma. Finally, in November of 1944, the 1st Battalion was ordered to move up to Lido, India, and then into Burma, while the rest of the unit stayed behind at Ramgar. That same month, the 1st Battalion would be engaging Japanese forces in Burma, supporting the advance of Chinese, American, as well as British troops. During this time, the problems of transporting the howitzers presented itself. In the jungle terrain, it proved extremely difficult to tow a four-ton howitzer using a four-ton truck, even on roads, which often turned into mud after a period of rain. Oftentimes, both guns and vehicles will find themselves stuck in the mud, and to get them moving again, two trucks had to be linked together. Sometimes, even military tractors had to be used. In fact, even before the formation of the unit, concerns had been raised about the potential usefulness of the 155mm howitzers in Burma as they would essentially be limited to areas with good road conditions. Nevertheless, in the few battles that they participated in, they proved to be quite effective. The Chinese would actually request another two regiments worth of 155mm howitzers from the US, with the Americans eventually agreeing to provide an additional 24 which were already at depots in India. However, none of these additional howitzers would make it into Chinese hands before the end of the war. By mid-1945, the howitzers had already been moved into China, with the Japanese surrendering before they got to see any further action. However, they would participate in the Chinese Civil War, with the regiment eventually being destroyed during the Liaoshin Campaign, and their howitzers captured by the People's Liberation Army, who would then use these guns in their own artillery units. Amazingly, despite all that these guns have been through, a number of them have survived to this day, with at least two on display in the Military Museum of the Chinese People's Revolution in Beijing.